Elden Ring is shattering records, exactly as we all expected. Okay, this is actually insane. So Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree comes out in a few days, and we're starting to see reviews this morning. I myself did get a review copy and put about 20 hours into it. It still feels like I'm nowhere near done. This feels like a repeat of the base game's review cycle where I thought I could probably finish this before the embargo and I was nowhere close to done with the game even after like 50 some hours put into it. Currently the coolest thing about Elden Ring, the Shadow of the Earth Tree that people are saying is the fact well, we got promised this big a of a game, and we were like, oh, wow, this is this is amazingly huge. And then people who have played it and who have seen it are like, oh, no, this was a blatant lie. What was promised was not delivered. It's five times bigger, only stacked on top of itself. That's what's actually happening with this DLC. It's... It's way, way bigger than was actually promised. With this DLC, 20 hours in, it feels like I'm about maybe two-fifths of the way through based on the progress that I've been making and how much of the map I've explored. Uh, but even then, I don't know all the nooks and crannies and secrets that lurk in this massive, utterly massive expansion. And now seeing what the review scores look like, it is actually crazy and this game, this DLC, might just break a record. Looking at the overall aggregate meta score from over 50 reviews, we're looking at a universal acclaim meta score of 95%. I don't know. Not that the critics score honestly even matters a single damn bit. But, you know, sometimes it can be accurate. And this, I think, is accurate. Everyone expected Shadow of the Earth 3 to actually be really, really good. The base game, wonderful, and, well, this is the same. If we've ever seen this score in a DLC or in an expansion, and look, we're talking about an era in games where a lot of expansions have gotten incredible acclaim. It wasn't long ago that Destiny 2 The Final Shape launched to great acclaim from critics and fans alike. That sitting at... Yeah, the final shape now that the mist has been cleared seemingly is good, which is good. But again, I don't think it's going to save Bungie, honestly. I think I think Sony's still coming in and, you know, replacing their developers with uh, rocket scientists to make bombs and stuff. And a meta score of 90%, which is still very freaking good. And then when you think of great expansions and DLCs, you think of, say, Witcher 3, Blood and Wine. That's sitting at a 92% from roughly 50 critic reviews. And then moving on to, say, Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, which had a rough start but made up for it with an expansion that uh, delivered and with various updates that overhaul the game. This DLC sitting at an 89%, so on and so forth. You think of Final um, Phantom Liberty is the expansion. Cyberpunk 2077 is actually the game, Young. Okay, don't 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 mess this up. Phantom Liberty did not have the Cyberpunk 2077 uh, problems at launch. Fantasy 14's expansions like Endwalker, which is sitting. But now, by the way, CD Projekt Red is dead, as we all know. It has been completely vocified. Ah, uh, when. When the Cyberpunk 2077 debacle happened, they got, I'll give you the too long didn't read, but I talked about this extensively. They got sued three or four times and they, and CDPR would probably not win a single lawsuit. They got sued by a lot of things for very, very because for blatant lies, essentially. So there was no way they win. And now suddenly CDPR Red is like, rainbow flags. Ah, yes, allies. Look at our game developers. They're all suddenly pink-haired cretins and whatnot. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. My uh, my speculation is that BlackRock came in and gave them a little bit of that money so th that they survived. Because, again, they got sued four separate times and they probably settled each time because there was no winning any of those lawsuits. Because they blatantly lied in everything.
CDP are just blatantly relied at everything when Cyberpunk came out. So, yeah, it's it's all downhill from here, boys, with CDPR, sadly. It's like Endwalker, which is sitting at a 92% meta score, or nice. Shadowbringers, which is sitting at a 90% meta score. But I don't know of a single DLC, despite this incredible array of expansions and DLCs, I don't know of a single one that has actually achieved a meta score of 95%. And those like extra few percentages beyond you know. by the way you know why i don't trust these scores because this dlc is locked by behind one of the later bosses i forgot which one this is locked behind Melanie or something like that i don't remember but the thing is um roughly 30 percent of people only have actually killed that boss <laughs> so the idea that these critics uh can actually you know play the game at a substantial level and you know review it is bull and i think this perfectly encompasses this the critics know that everyone is hyped about this game and essentially giving it a mixed or negative review is bad i would not be surprised that all the critic reviews currently are just copy pastes of like one dude who actually could play the game which would be hilarious. Because, well, the, uh, the developers behind El uh, Elden Ring and the Dark Souls series in general, well, they're kind of currently immune and no one cares about the fact that they don't put in diversity and all of this ESG nonsense and Vogue shit into their games. And no one can attack them for that. So any outlet that just goes and gives them a negative score is instantaneously just going to be the laughing stock. This is how corrupt c critics are. They serve no real purpose any longer in life. Percent and those like extra few percentages beyond, you know, 92 or whatever, that takes a lot to get there. It takes such universal agreement that something is a masterpiece that it drives a score to that level. And that's a general agreement that this DLC is a masterpiece. Having put 20 hours into it, again, I still Almost feel like sneezed. I've not seen the best this DLC has to offer. But I will tell you that there are very few games in this world right now that I can play for hours and hours on end without having to take a break. And Elden Ring did that for me, and Shadow of the Earth Tree did that for me again. I found Young, you just have low testosterone, relax. Myself, losing track of time with Shadow of the Earth Tree, playing, you know, six hours at a time or whatever, and maybe more. Uh, and this is an expansion that is essentially more Elden Ring, but does so so competently, does so with such freshness, because the bosses are all so... I mean, the bosses are my favorite part of a FromSoft game. It's the stuff that I look forward to most. No shit. And the bosses in this game are not only incredibly designed and are some of the craziest looking uh, creatures and entities you've ever seen, just the, the battles themselves and the, their attacks and moves, and it's all so beautifully realized and presented. And beyond that, they are tough as hell. Uh, FromSoft is getting better and better at... Uh, essentially upping the difficulty. They know that FromSoft players, they know that uh, Soulsborne players are just getting too good at this game, are getting better and better with each new entry. And so FromSoft... Ha Again, that's that's a lie. Even though a lot of people play this game, a lot of people give up halfway through or get bored halfway through. And by the way, that is not a bad thing. Do not misunderstand. A lot of good games, people don't finish them. They don't even get halfway through them. But it's still a good game. It's just most people don't finish games. That's just the reality of the world. If if a game has like a 10 or 20% completion rate, it can easily be considered the masterpiece, even though it's so low. Again, not even a big deal. Has to step up the difficulty, and they're definitely doing that. Some of these bosses are going to take you a while to beat. In fact, plenty of reviews out there already saying that this DLC might feature some of the hardest, uh, if not the potentially hardest, 
uh, bosses that Ooh, we've that ever seen cool. from a FromSoft game, and I'm sure there'll be ways people can. Okay, okay, time to uh, time to you know just pull out my 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 absolute lost Ark supremacist card here and say, oh, oh, what well, well, what's what's gonna happen? They're gonna ch change change how the bosses work, you know? Stay away a little bit too long from the boss. They do a charge attack on you, and then they follow it up with a, a medium a medium type of attack. Or, you know, what what are they gonna do? Add a sixth move set to the bosses instead of four or five? Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus! Lost Ark Supremacy, baby. You either know it or you don't. Use and exploit uh, Elden Ring's uh, just expansive mechanical kind of complexities to be able to come up with intricate solutions and whatever. But I play very traditionally where I just kind of have melee weapons and go at it like a sort of a more traditional Dark Souls style gameplay experience. And playing okay. it that way, like, it, it is it is quite the challenge, and I'm someone who refuses to use uh, ashes and summons and whatnot, but that's, that option is there for those who prefer to go that route, and nothing wrong with that. For my part, I just stick to that traditional, I'm going to beat this boss by myself, uh, kind of an experience, and the bosses just are awesome, and I don't... There, there is this unwritten rule about people not using summons to do bosses. Kind of crazy, honestly. I mean, the summon's there for a reason. But, oh no, you can't use summons. The unwritten rule. I don't want to spoil much more than that. And speaking of weapons, the just that alone, the introduction of the new weapons and the sheer variety of new weapon types and how much it expands the possibilities of the way you can play this game and how it makes the combat feel new again is a big part of the draw and appeal of Shadow of the Earth Tree. I discovered my new favorite uh, weapons, the backhand blades, which not only have great swiftness, but also have the special move where you dash diagonally and do sort of like a backhand stab. And that okay. feels freaking awesome when you master it and know how to dodge and weave around with it and being on the offensive at the same time, weaving around. A well, I'm not going to lie, Young. From what I'm looking here, you're not doing a good job at that honestly but hey tax and just kind of making combat look so badass and so smooth and and so cinematic almost uh this is the weapon that i've been using most uh, throughout my personal playthrough but the thing is there are other weapons that i haven't really fully explored or tried that i haven't really even discovered at this point so when i do find those who knows maybe i'll gravitate towards a new weapon and combat will feel fresh yeah you will gravitate towards a new weapon these games always work like that you you find a weapon it's strong it's good it actually deals a lot of damage you're like ah, i love this and then at some point the weapon no longer is good enough and you find a new weapon and it doesn't matter if it's the complete opposite of the previous one and it does it just does enough damage it's like ah this is even amazinger this is just a human thing to human yet again just the sheer variety of weapons, the kinds of builds you can make, the uh, kinds of options. Okay, let's not talk about builds because, yeah, there's there's a bunch of things that you can do here. ...you have to really uh, modify your playstyle to your liking and to kind of... Wait, is this a review? There's no fucking way that Yongya yeah is doing a review. This is the worst Yongya yeah content ever. Okay, let's see. Offer valuable items and loot. Oh, God, no, 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 thank you, I... <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyway, that was... Things, Young, gaming yeah, news, reviews, Young news, and discussions. reviews, discussions. Stay tuned right here Young, on Young, yeah. yeah. I'll see, see you guys, guys next Young. time. Young, 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 yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Anyway, Elden Ring. This is going to be great, let's be completely honest, man. We had such a long rut of complete shit games, complete shit shows, movies, and all of this, and suddenly it's like so many good things are dropping on us, and the year is going to just get better again, you know, with more stuff dropping. Finally, finally, it's actually a good time to be alive. Anyway, have a nice day. Bye.